Naruto versus Luffy, Saitama versus Goku, Zoro versus minorities. These are all battles from different universes that people have pondered about for, well, as long as anime has existed. For some reason in the anime community, any time that we grow attached to a character, we have to find out exactly how strong they are to see if they can match up from other characters in other universes. While I myself have done a fair amount of battles from characters from the same universe, I'm not really one for comparing characters from different universes. There's too much going on, there's too many variables, different universes have different power systems that could not apply to separate power systems. The whole thing's messy and it kind of feels like people arguing whose dad's gonna beat whose dad in a fight. But I can't sit here and act like I don't like knowing exactly how powerful a character is. Not so I can say, oh, my character beats your character, more so I can just get a full understanding of that character within the confines of their own universe. And for a lot of characters, quantifying this is relatively easy. You take the strongest they've ever been in battle and you figure out exactly what they were doing in that circumstance. But it's not always easy. See, because while a lot of characters get stronger progressively and their power-ups make sense that can be quantified, there's other characters whose power-ups and abilities seem to defy logic. And if you know me, you already know that I never go for the easy things on my pages. So today, we're going to be talking about how strong one of the most logic-defying characters in all of anime is Saitama. Yes, that's right. Today, we are answering the question, how strong is Saitama. And just as a precursor here, we are going to be talking about a lot of manga feats here. I'm going to try and keep it as spoiler free as possible, but do be warned. But before we get to power scaling our favorite bald headed hero, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. So, Saitama, a character of seemingly limitless power who many refer to as a gag, a character created specifically to act as a foil to the shonen genre, a character who breaks any trope that a shonen MC is supposed to fall into, a character who doesn't need a training arc or a power up or the death of a loved one in order to get stronger, a character who only needs 100 push ups, 100 squats, 100 sit ups, and a 10 kilometer run to be the strongest being in the universe. Saitama, for as long as he's existed, has served as a reminder that it's not that deep. That being a well-written character doesn't require your character going through an intense amount of suffering and pain in hard work. A character can simply be gifted limitless strength and find struggles in different things. See, Saitama is the furthest thing from a gag character. Saitama is actually a very serious character. See, while Saitama doesn't struggle with acquiring strength, he struggles with a lot of other things. Climbing through the hero ranks, tearing his clothes, losing his hair, keeping enough food on the table. See, a lot of people look at Saitama and see his effortless power as a gag. Oh, anytime Saitama's introduced into a fight, he wins in one punch. That's gotta be a gag character. No, Saitama isn't a gag. He's a step away from a trope. Saitama, unlike every other shonen MC to exist, doesn't need to fall down to get stronger. And Saitama's limitless strength isn't even a gag. Within the confines of every single universe, the MC of said universe basically has limitless power. Goku, Naruto, Luffy, Ichigo all rise to the occasion whenever they need to. There is always more power for a shonen MC to tap into within their respective universes. The only difference between Saitama and those other MCs is is the path they take to get there. So once again, no, Saitama is not a gag. He just takes a different path than other shonen MC, and therefore a lot of people aren't adjusted to it. Find me one shonen MC who hasn't tapped into some new well of power to overcome the next strongest entity, and I'll show you a person who probably wasn't the main character of their own show. But now that we have addressed that I don't believe that Saitama is a gag character, let's get to talking about how strong he truly is. We've obviously seen Saitama's strength on display a numerous amount of times. We've seen him destroy the House of Evolution's perfect creation and Carnage Kabuto in one punch. We saw him destroy Boros in two punches when Boros was an alien who went from planet to planet seeking an opponent who was finally strong enough to take him on. With Saitama doing things like being thrown to the moon, holding his breath, and jumping back to Earth in this fight. And considering the fact that we know it takes a second and a half for light to travel from the moon to the Earth, and that's about how long it took Saitama to get back to Earth, he was traveling at near light speed. But in this battle against Boros, he was going anything but all out. In fact, truly the only time we've ever seen Saitama go all out is in his most recent fight in the Manga 
against Garo. You see, Garo's battle against Saitama really boils down into two separate sections. And that is, and we're heading into manga spoilers here, so do beware, Garo before accepting the powers of God and Garo after. You see, Garo spends almost the entire Monster Association arc getting in battles against powerful opponents, kind of losing, kind of winning, and using that to get even stronger. Garo comes into combat against people like King Orochi, Lackluster Bang, pretty much all of the S-Class heroes. And every time he comes up against these heroes, he rises to their level. But Garo wasn't only fighting against heroes, he was also fighting against villains. Villains like Sage Centipede and Platinum Spur. And even after fighting these villains, Garo was getting substantially stronger. So Garo, in his fully monsterized form, was able to defeat people like the Sage Centipede and Platinum Spur. The reason that defeating the likes of these two is important is because of how he did it. See, Sage Centipede is supposed to be a representation of Earth's hatred towards the destruction that humans are giving it. And thus, Sage Centipede is said to be multiple times stronger than Elder Centipede. Elder Centipede being the centipede that Saitama destroyed in one punch, but also the centipede that was only stated that three S-Class heroes would be able to destroy. Those being Black Luster, Metal Knight, and Tornado. Mind you, Bang and Bomb simultaneously striking Elder Centipede with all of their power was not enough to kill it. However, Garo was able to split Sage Centipede down the middle, meaning at that point that he was at least tens of times stronger than the strongest of S-Class heroes outside of Blast. But the more impressive feat of those two fights is actually his battle against Platinum Sperm. See, Platinum Sperm is what happens when Black Sperm brings five trillion of his clones together, or it might be 50 trillion, I honestly don't remember. And in this battle against Platinum Sperm, Platinum Sperm and Garo achieve speed feats faster then Flashy Flash, with Flashy Flash A not being able to keep up with them and B admitting that they're faster than him. Mind you, Flashy Flash is the fastest being in the universe outside of Blast, as far as Flashy Flash knows. Obviously, also Saitama is fast. But once again, in this battle against Platinum Sperm, Garo and Platinum Sperm in a span of 1.3 milliseconds, leave an intertangling web of after images that are represented as light streaks that could be dozens of miles long. You see, we can't entirely quantify just how far these after images stretch. However, what we can see is that these after images start on the surface of the Earth and go up so high that the curvature of the Earth is visible. Now, the minimum required distance to be off Earth to see the curvature of the Earth is 35,000 feet, which is roughly seven miles. That's the minimum requirements. Within this panel, the curvature of the Earth is very clear, so doubling it and calling it 15-ish miles is not a stretch. And there are thousands of lines within this 15-mile after image. So with just making a rough estimation while fighting, which would mean they're probably not using their max speed, Platinum Sperm and Garo were able to cover anywhere from 15 to 20 thousand miles in 1.3 milliseconds. Light travels 186 miles every millisecond. Meaning, even if you substantially lowballed this feat, Garo is still massively faster than light. What's truly really impressive about all of this, though, is that Bomb actually stated that Bang, if he used the exploding heart technique that Garo was using that Bang had locked away decades ago, that Bang actually would have won in that fight against Garo. But who knows, really? The real problem for heroes all around the world is that Garo learns from every single one of his battles until he awakens the monster calamity God Slayer Fist. See, Garo has the ability to mimic any fighting style he's ever seen. And it doesn't matter if he's seen it for two seconds or 10 years, he can pretty much master it instantaneously. His God Slayer Fist is an amalgamation of every fighting style he's ever taken. And this technique is actually so powerful that in order to counter it, Saitama had to use his two-handed normal punch technique. However, genuinely, the most impressive thing that Garo can do in this form is his Fajin. And no, we're not talking about Deku's Fajin, we're talking about Garo's Fajin. See, Garo's Fajin creates shockwaves that are meant to shock the internal organs of whoever he's fighting. And Garo's extreme Fajin can shoot somebody through the entirety of the Earth, moved tectonic plates, and quite literally created a new continent on the other side of the Earth that he used it from. It also distorted magnetic and electrical field waves. For all intents and purposes, it is a planet-busting attack. However, none of this is enough to beat Saitama. In fact, as Garo and Saitama go about their battle, all that really happens is that Garo keeps accidentally saving people, and Saitama isn't taking the battle seriously. As Garo, who's trying to become evil incarnate, the representation of fear around the world continuously saves people, and Saitama keeps going, oh, 
Good job. Garo becomes more and more dismayed and starts to question why he's doing any of this. Technically, in the webcomic, it's a little bit different, but we're going with the manga. But as Garo becomes more and more dismayed, he starts to question whether or not he even wants to be alive. And as he reaches the true pit of his despair, an entity known only as God, which has recently been sort of unsealed from the moon, reaches out to Garo, specifically in the form of Bang. And this god offers his powers to Garo. And while Garo doesn't technically accept the powers, he still kind of ends up with them, giving him the Awakened Garo Cosmic Fear mode. Now this mode is leaps in bounds stronger than anything that he previously was. He in this mode essentially becomes a conduit for the One Punch Man universe's god's power. And as god is quite literally the final antagonist of the entire manga, it's quite the power. But since Garo didn't fully accept God's powers, he didn't fully come under the command of God, which implies that Garo actually could have been stronger technically if he had fully taken the powers of God. And while it's been argued that this version of Garo is stronger than Saitama was when Garo awoke to this power, I don't necessarily think that's the case. See, basically the first thing that this version of Garo does is fight against Blast. And while once again, it's sort of implied that Blast would have been able to defeat this version of Garo, because Garo is constantly evolving, he's created nuclear fission fists. Now these nuclear fission fists cause a nuclear explosion every time Garo throws a punch. And Garo himself is a massive irradiated being. Anybody around him dies of radiation poisoning. And because Blast doesn't want the earth to be destroyed, Blast is doing whatever he can to teleport these nuclear explosions into the upper atmosphere. But still being able to put the number one ranked S-class hero on his back heels is saying something. On top of that, from his battle against Blast, he learned how to create subspace portals like Blast does, as Blast can create portals to teleport people or his fists to make his punches land every single time. So now, from this battle against Blast, Garu can officially throw nuclear bombs with his fists that can teleport to wherever he needs them to be. And this teleportation, is instantaneous. Meaning that regardless of how far Garo is away from you, you still have to react to massively faster than light punches to avoid his punches because he can just throw them through a portal. However, after fighting against Blast and doing some relatively diabolical things, Garo finally finds himself in combat against Saitama. And in his battle against Saitama, he begins to mimic Saitama's strength until it's as if Saitama is fighting against himself. However, in this battle, Saitama is only using one hand and is enacting on a promise to not kill Garo. In fact, he's actually enacting on a promise to try to not rough him up too much. While multiple times throughout Saitama and Garo's fight, Saitama uses Siri punches or any serious technique to say that Saitama is going all out in this fight is a stretch because yes is Saitama very mad at Garo absolutely but let's not forget that this entire time he is fighting with one hand and not trying to kill him on top of all of this because Garo received powers from God he has all of the knowledge of the universe on top of that he has universal energy projection meaning that on top of being able to just use cosmic radiation and just emitting cosmic radiation by existing Garo can control all of the energies of the universe meaning he can deliver incredibly powerful blows using cosmic energy on top of that since he fought against Blast, who's able to manipulate gravity with his punches, he too learned how to manipulate gravity to increase the power of his punches. So you have somebody who's massively faster than light, can create subspace portals, can control gravity, cosmic energy, and cosmic radiation. On top of that, he's able to copy any fight style he sees, including Saitama's. And if you don't think he has at least planet busting ability, his ability Gamma Ray Burst was said by Blast that if it even grazed Earth, it would destroy it. Now that we've set the stage for just how strong Garo is, we should talk about Saitama versus Garo. More specifically, what Saitama accomplished in this fight. Not only was Saitama immune to the cosmic radiation and cosmic energy of Garo, he was able to tank hundreds of shots from Garo. Hundreds of nuclear bomb gravity boosted shots. And before Garo even awoke into God mode, Garo used extreme Fajin to shoot Saitama through a planet. But since we're talking about Saitama's durability feats during this fight, it doesn't end at just taking shots from Garo. We learned in this fight that Saitama can also exist in the vacuum of space completely fine. For no reason other than why wouldn't he be able to? But outside of surviving the vacuum of space and Garo's punches, Saitama also survives being thrown into the sun. Yes, that's right. Garo is able to teleport anywhere he can see. And Garo can see the earth from the sun and obviously vice versa. And Saitama is completely fine after being thrown into the sun. I mean, his clothes burn off, but that's 
it. Meaning that Saitama very, very easily has sun level durability. But enough about his durability, let's talk about his speed and reaction time. We've already established that Garo pre-god mode is massively, and I mean massively faster than light. By my conservative estimations, about 94 times faster than the speed of light. And that was before he awoke to god powers, which gave him an immeasurable power up. Saitama with one hand is able to react and counteract every single one of Garo's punches. And mind you, these aren't regular punches. Most of these are punches being thrown through portals through all different kinds of angles. And also, Saitama is trying to counter these punches, not counter and kill the puncher. But genuinely, the most impressive bit about this is that Saitama not only is able to react to these portals, he's also able to interact with them. As Garo tries to open a portal next to Saitama to teleport him, and Saitama just kicks it away, implying that Saitama not only can react to instantaneous portal generation, he also can interact with subspace dimensions. Meaning that Saitama is also, at the very least, massively faster than light. This is proven even further after Saitama is thrown into the sun. Because after Garo throws Saitama into the sun, he's like, all done with him and teleports back to the earth. However, Garo is not done with Saitama. In fact, after being thrown into the sun, Saitama really has no way to get around because he's not wearing any clothes and therefore he's kind of just floating in space. That is of course, until Saitama farts. Yes, you heard me right. Saitama farts. But this isn't just a regular fart, this is a Saitama fart. This is a One Punch Man fart. And the propulsive power of this fart sends Saitama from the sun to the earth in a matter of seconds. What do I say when I mean seconds? I don't really know. It's kind of impossible to quantify exactly. All we know is that after Garo throws Saitama into the sun, he can see the earth from the sun, which is insane because the earth would be tiny, creates a portal to the earth and teleports there. So all in all, probably a second and a half, two seconds. In that amount of time, Saitama manages to propel himself from the sun to the earth. For frame of reference, it takes eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. Saitama did it in two, maybe three seconds. Which, if we're calling it two and a half seconds, would mean that just with a fart, Saitama is roughly 192 times faster than the speed of light. Now, obviously, there's no air resistance or matter in deep space, so hypothetically, he could travel faster. But since energy is conserved in space and no object is slowed down, that would mean that the initial boost of his fart was enough to propel him to the speed of 192 times faster than the speed of light. And if we use the kinetic energy formula, of kinetic energy equals one half mass times velocity squared, where we say Saitama is, I don't know, 100 kilograms, which is about 220 pounds. Seems like a lot, I know, but he's ripped, he's kind of tall, we'll go with it. And speed of light is rounded up to 100 billion feet per second. It's 983 million feet per second. Using those numbers, if my calculations are correct, that would state that Saitama's fart generated about 50 trillion joules of energy, or 50 million megajoules. I might have missed the zero somewhere, it's been a while since I've done math, but that's roughly Roughly the power of a nuclear bomb with a fart. But enough about Saitama's speed, let's talk about his power, the real thing people are curious about. Well, during his fight against Garo, there was two separate times that Saitama unleashed a planet buster attack. When Saitama threw his first serious punch at Garo after Garo aggravated Saitama, Blast stated that if that punch were to come into contact with Garo, it would destroy the Earth. And so Blast teleports Garo and Saitama to the outer atmosphere so their punches can collide. The problem is when their punches collide, it does a lot more than just destroy a planet. See, when their punches collide, it creates a massive explosion. An explosion that destroys a circle of stars in space. Now, this circle of stars in space is roughly the size of Earth. And considering the fact that if you hold a speck of sand to the sky, it will be hiding more galaxies than your brain can even comprehend, creating an Earth-sized hole in space where all of the suns and planets are gone means that in this one punch alone, Saitama destroyed limitless. I mean, quite literally, possibly, infinite galaxies. Now you could say this feat isn't entirely up to Saitama because it was also partly Garo's feat, but we actually know that nuclear explosions do not travel in space. How do we know this? A little thing America did in the 60s known as Project Starfish. See, America was curious what would happen if a nuke exploded in space. And so we strapped a bunch of nukes to rockets, shot them into space and exploded them in space. We did this a lot of times relatively unsuccessfully until we got to Project Starfish, where we detonated a nuke about 250 miles into the atmosphere. What we learned from this is that nuclear explosion shockwaves do not travel through the vacuum of space. Now, obviously, Garo has other things that aren't nuclear fission. He can attack with the power of cosmic radiation and cosmic energy. But even if you only give 
half of this feat to Saitama, being able to destroy even half of an Earth-sized hole through the universe is insane. Because mind you, the closest star to Earth is 40 trillion kilometers away, while the furthest star that we can see is 2.64 e to the 24th kilometers away. That's 24 zeros. Now, obviously, this star was seen using a telescope, but this feat implies that the destruction created by Saitama and Garo's fists meeting the first time was able to instantaneously destroy limitless universes trillions of kilometers away. And while technically energy travels endlessly through space because there's nothing to stop it except for maybe other planets, that means the shockwave generated by this punch traveled trillions of kilometers in an instant. Also, considering the fact that this punch destroyed multiple, if not limitless, universes implies that Saitama is well into multiversal. He's definitely planetary because he was able to destroy a planet with one hand using his serious series table flip, where he simply by reaching into the crust of one of Jupiter's moons, lifted really hard and destroyed the entire thing. By destroying this planet, he dropped Garo into the center of the debris and bounced around the debris of the planet thousands of times, landing limitless blows on Garo. I say limitless because I have no idea how many punches he actually landed on Garo. What I do know is that he was within the blink of an eye, able to travel between these pieces of debris the size of a planet hundreds, if not thousands of times. And oh yeah, by the way, he also destroyed Jupiter with a sneeze. In fact, in Garo's fight against Saitama, Garo was getting almost infinitely stronger while fighting Saitama, as he was able to mimic things like blast technique and Saitama's techniques. In fact, he got to the the point where Saitama was essentially fighting himself. However, Garo pondered whether or not Saitama's powers were limitless because Saitama was growing stronger faster than Garo was. Which is why when Garo loses this fight, he actually teaches Saitama how to use the most powerful technique he learned from God, a technique that would allow Saitama to travel through time. As Garo was in control of all of the elements of the universe, he was also in control of his own bodily composition. And thus Garo, with his strongest technique, was able to compose his body of anti-particles, things that would allow him to travel through space-time. Garo, while losing the powers of God, taught Saitama how to use this ability. And Saitama learned it, which gave Saitama the ability to compose his body of anti-particles to travel through time, and more importantly than anything, to reverse causality. See, everything in the universe has cause and effect. I throw this remote, it falls down and hits me in the head. However, what if the cause and the effect were separated? Effectively, what if something's effect could happen without its cause happening yet? What if this hit me in the head before I threw this? That is effectively what Saitama is now able to accomplish. By making his body out of antiparticles, Saitama is now able to have a punch land before he throws it. And in the words of one and Yusuke Murata, reverse causality is impossible to dodge. And that's it. That's how strong Saitama is. Lowballing, I would say he has at least sun level durability. He's massively faster than light. He is multiversal in AP. And when you think about it, his speed is actually probably irrelevant considering the fact that he can reverse causality, meaning that speed isn't really a thing. He can control the effects of cause and effect. You can't dodge what technically hasn't happened yet. So the real question becomes, is he stronger than Goku? I don't care. But if you care, you can take this video to your friends and you can debate with them about which imaginary character would win in a fight even though they'll never meet each other in battle ever. And both of you can disagree to the very end, neither of you conceding either of your points and well, have absolutely nothing get accomplished. But at least we now know how strong Saitama is. And if you appreciate at least that much guys, then please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Squirrel Girl negs both Saitama and Goku. Life is meaningless, stop arguing.